Yo, everybody, this is Jedi. Other host, I got to fill in the rest, don't I? The Beyond Nemesis and Halo and Ratio plus uh, PlayStation fell off podcast. Uh, you know, I'm probably on rock, to be honest. I thought it was a pretty funny joke, um, considering, like, it was... I mean, you can look at that and be like, okay, that was, that was, that was a pretty good diss, to be honest. So, but I never... What about you? What about you? You have to. I gave you an answer. You gotta, you gotta pick one. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Smith was a winner that night. Um, hold on one second. It's may which you just said this. There's the sound. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm listening to the audio now. Yeah, no audio from you. How about now? All right, now we're good. That happens every once in a while. OBS fail. There we go. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Um, okay. I, I guess, I guess I would go. I guess I would go team team rock. But I, I think the best part of it for me was uh, like, and like the minute thereafter, where like Chris Rock kind of like stood there, like trying to make sense of it all, and mm -hmm. he he literally said, "It was like, what what did he say? This was what this." This was the most, this just was the best moment in live television history or something like that like yeah. immediately after. And now it's like the most watched <laughs> video on YouTube ever in 24 hours. So, oh my God. Uh, I remember it, just being on Twitter myself being like, oh, that happened? What's that? I always remember being on Twitter the moment it happened. Like I was just yeah. scrolling and it just like immediate, like it's so weird watching news just kind of immediately unfold and you're there to see it, especially on social media. I, you know, the first time, this is we're getting totally, totally, totally off topic now, but um, I think back to like w when I was uh Jesus, we're gonna get real dark here all of a sudden. <laughs> when, oh, so, so, so September eleventh, two thousand one happened when I was in ninth grade in high school. So we didn't really have social media then, but that was like like one of those weird moments where like news of something like colossal was spreading like wildfire, but it was spreading organically like throughout our mm -hmm. school, and I'm never gonna forget how quickly the story like every single person in school had heard something different and like there there was we had absolutely zero way of corroborating anything at that time because like we had the internet like it existed but it wasn't like we didn't have cell phones we didn't you know like it was a, I'm, I'm a boomer i'm revealing you know how just how old i am now but that that was weird and now like you're saying it's totally different like on social media and stuff like just like these stories yeah, like with Ukraine, with like the uh, political stuff happening as well, it's like as it unfolds, like you just see so many different types of like reactions, and like with the internet, naturally, the first thing that we do is create memes these days yes. instead of actually, you know, make <laughs> react as a country. <laughs> I right, saw so my favorite one so far is uh, it's Will Smith hitting uh, Chris Rock with the Peacekeeper from Apex. But there's like a little, <laughs> there's a little like a nine number above his head because that's like the the lowest damage peacekeeper shot that you can mm -hmm. hit is nine. <laughs> so it's just like this is, yeah, that, that was pretty good. Golden, I made a I made a meme uh, for my work and I thought it was pretty cool. It was a JoJo reference, so I don't know if I could explain it to you and you'd understand it. Probably but, not. Uh, had some pretty good engagement and impressions off of it. Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah. Somebody's probably done it. Though. What? I was a little late to mine. There was already like a cartoon See, version up and everything like that. That's the thing. I was gonna I woke up this morning and I was gonna Photoshop, you know, like Will Smith hitting uh Chris Rock onto the box art of I Am Legend. Mm -hmm. And with because like you know, I am legend because of like a legendary moment. And I was like, Oh, this is super clever. And I didn't do it because like somebody had to have done this already. Like it, only like twelve hours had passed, but I was like, somebody already did this, I'm sure. Yeah.
Uh, what I wanted to do was uh, actually just take the the meme itself and put it over like Will Smith's head and just like put over words my social media over Chris Rock's face because like that meme is just <laughs> yeah it's not a bad every idea. single line over and over and over and over. I'm like, all right, well, when will it end? It's yeah. like the Vin Diesel meme and the family meme. Like it's just not going to end now. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, there's there's a few of them though that literally are like some are just timeless. Like some memes do like you know. I don't Dude. know. Like they have like a an expiration date, but uh, some like of them just like, like what? Like loss? Is this loss? Loss? Yeah. I don't. I don't even know that one. One hundred percent of experienced loss. What the the meme? Yes, loss. Is this loss? No, I never even heard it. No, you're so you definitely seen it, dude. I promise. It, 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 there's a visual with it. Yes. Okay. So for, see, that's probably forever, right. forever ago. Penny Arcade had this like stupid comic that just came out. It's this one right here. I'm copying it and putting it in a Discord for you. I'm so surprised you don't know what this is. But like, it is just the, the lack of context in here, but the image says it all. And in like, I don't the, think I ever the, saw that one. The, ongoing joke is is this loss so like people will like meme the hell out of this like for example this is a meme i'm gonna type it to you so i'm gonna do i'm gonna do this <laughs> this 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 and that it didn't even do it right what the hell anyways it'll like it's like one of those things that you can see immediately and pick up on. I, I swear, I'll have to send it to you later. We'll talk about it offline. Okay. I promise you. I promise. Oh, our, our no, I, I, is it, it's, yeah, it's because I'm looking at the Discord yep. DMs. That's fixed now. Um, but yeah, dude, that 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 is like again. It's, that's it one of the be. timeless ones. You should definitely get get yourself educated there. See, now I broke I broke the camera because of uh. At least I'm on there. Yeah, you're good. I broke the camera because of memes, like literally. All right, hold on. Let me put up a be right back screen and I'll fix it. Give me, give me like thirty seconds, guys. I can't do a whole podcast like this. <laughs> I hear my like. It's been a minute since I had a chance to restart. Your laptop? I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it going. Yeah, Guess, you're good. Uh, did I fix it? I think I fixed it. Um, on, uh, on accident. Yes, I did. Okay, cool. All right, cool. All right. So enough Will Smith, Chris Rock, I guess. Um, I, I, we can't lead with double meme content. I mean, we had we had Will Smith and and I guess I guess we had just have to. Kingdom Hearts Tamagotchis are coming out in Japan this October, and I don't know if you saw this, but. For those of you who don't remember Tamagotchis, these were like, uh, what the heck would it? What do you compare it to these days? He like joins these podcasts, like knows what a Tamagotchi is. We at least had one, and if it wasn't at least, you know, the original Tamagotchi it was probably like the Pokemon one or the Digimon ones. Was there a Pokemon Tamagotchi? I don't even know, didn't even know that. Makes total sense. There's a Pikachu one for Pokemon Yellow, and then there was also uh, Gold and Silver Tamagotchis as well. So Tamagotchis were like these little like keychain sized things with like, I don't know, with like maybe like two buttons on it and uh, not many, but very basic controls. And you had to like raise it like a pet, like a digital pet, basically. Like, yeah, Giga Pet was another one, a competitor. Um, and you had to feed it, you know, every so often or whatever and, and give it water. And uh, I, I remember I had one in fifth grade. And we used to like hide them in our desks from our teachers because we weren't supposed to have them at school. But it, it was kind of. You had to if you're going to take good care of it. But anyway, there's Kingdom Hearts Tamagotchis coming. And I think the odd thing about this is this actual Kingdom Hearts, like, like humanoid characters, like not like animals, but like, like Sora or something. Like, I, I don't I don't know which characters are on them exactly. But heartless that you raise more than likely, like maybe you can raise a heartless for it to like turn into something cool. I'm pretty sure they won't like actually include. I thought um, I said characters. <laughs> I thought I saw like actual like little humans. Like stylized humans at least. Did you find it? No, I'm looking at it right now. That sounds pretty cool though. I mean, like Japan is the only place I could get away with keep like this that can still do Tamagotchis. They're still widely popular. 
Yeah. I don't know. I like to search for it. Yeah, that's, that's the weird thing. There's a Tamagotchi app. Like, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that's not their... Maybe it is their full focus, but I, I, I don't know. Um, let's get out of the Tamagotchi territory. And let's get into the, the meat of the discussion for the night, which is definitely, if it's you and I, it's going to be the Halo show. No doubt about it. The premiere is out. I know we've both watched it. And I'm sure we both have thoughts. Um, before we get into it, I will say that it, it set the record for the biggest premiere on Paramount Plus ever, which is the short-lived service, yeah. but still, that's a big deal. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, I don't think it's but, short-lived. I mean, like, it didn't ride on the backbones of, like, any specific launch. It's 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 been kicking it for, yeah. for a while now. Um. So what did you, what did you think? Let's let's just do it. What what let's just blow it open from the top. What did you think? Uh, I think the only thing I loved about it was the level of violence. Yeah, I love that. Like we don't even get that kind of violence in the main games. Mm -hmm. Like whenever that elite just came straight out and just blew people to like, actual pieces. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the, the, those weapons don't work that way in the even in the canon, like no. in books or anything like that. They're mainly supposed to be like really hot plasma burns and anything, but like violence. Yeah, I like that part. That it, was like super awesome. But everything the, else, I was definitely a hater. The the books in general, I think, do a much better job. Like you said, like making the the covenant weapons and technology seem much more like um, menacing. Like yeah, like like dangerous. Like you know, like mm -hmm. there's there's descriptions of like Spartan armor being hit with like a single plasma bolt and it like melts away, like like a whole mm -hmm. like part of their armor. Which then you think, yeah. like, what would it do to, like, a normal person? You know, like, um, so, yeah, I love sure. that, too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, the violence was cool. The plasma, like, itself, like, in those specific areas, like, I don't think people really know what it even is. Probably for, not. Like, the show to even, like, need to add contextual value to it. But, uh, again, I was, a, I was a pretty big hater for it, but I did watch it with my roommate, and he has had zero, like, engagement with Halo. Mm -hmm. Like, he's probably played them as a kid. Yeah. Um, but or like a little bit older than that, but like he never really got into it. He was like all aboard the hype train for it. He was like, This is badass. He's like, I want to yeah. be a smart now. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm not gonna be an asshole. I don't want to like ruin yeah. it for you. I gave him like some contextual like history on like what Halo is, uh, without having to spoil too much. But um, I'm glad at least some people were liking it, right? You know, again, like we know what this show is for it's definitely for yeah. like the new broader audience and hopefully that'll bring that audience into the games and then we'll start to see like more engagement around like you know just the halo franchise the other yeah and and i think the the numbers from the premiere definitely show that it has the potential to, to do that like the fact that it's already their biggest premiere that's a really good sign for the halo franchise and for paramount both like hey that's a big deal you know um i had a ton of critiques about it but i found enough to I guess at the end of the day, still be as much as I'm sitting there and like picking it apart while I'm watching it, you know, and being like, mm -hmm. ah, why'd they do that? I still found enough to be like excited to see where it goes. Um, mm -hmm. Like there was tons of stuff where I'm like, ah, why did they do that? Why did they do this? Why did they do that? But I still at the end of the day was like, I want to watch the rest. You know what I mean? Like it was it, what I said was the first thing I said was like, it's that by no means a masterpiece, but it's not like like an abomination like you know what i mean like there's tons of yeah. stuff that i want to that i want to critique about it like yeah i mean i guess the good things i would say that the actual violence yeah was like really was really good i thought mm -hmm. i think the spartans themselves like their armor i think their armor looks really really good like i i feel Ooh. like they did a good job with that um as far as like you know the cg definitely uh very very questionable um the way the elites look very very questionable yeah, very um, questionable we've all seen that one where they show like chief throwing the the assault rifle on the ground and not using the prop but using like a cg assault rifle to kind of throw it on the ground it looks awful um but like helmet wise you know i think about well, i thought the helmets were actually pretty cool in terms yeah. of armor pieces like whatever we see chief take off the helmet like i do like how it has the Halo 4 effect to it where the uh helmet does um do you want to still go to it? Um the uh, the helmet does like kind of expand so that way mm -hmm. it's able to be taken off and stuff like that. I thought that was cool. Um and everybody else's helmet looks great so far. 
I, yeah. I think right now that in terms of like strongest like actors and stuff like that, I would probably say it's Catherine Keys right now. Like honestly, Miranda and Keys, I think they're pretty pretty good. Uh, Miranda was a little bit like I think corny because she was like you know devil, not devil's advocate for like the that perspective, but like she was like the only one who really cared about like the other characters and stuff. Yeah. And obviously, the moral of like everybody else. But those like, characters always things. come off a little corny, I think, in most things. Like like. It's, they come off as like the stereotypical like moral you know like standard you know what i mean yeah uh keys though i really liked i really liked keys actor he didn't i think he did a really good job i think he really kind of pieced together like the the i think the tone and the seriousness of the original captain keys See, in, in a really I, good way some people are gonna hate me for saying this I think both Captain Keys and I loved Captain Keys and Miranda Keys are total non-characters. Not in the show, in the mm -hmm. actual like like as far as the games go, like mm -hmm. like Captain Keys was just like a <laughs> Captain Keys was like a walking meme in most of the levels. Like see, almost the level not not to the the level that Sarge was in Halo CE, but like I remember like. He says, uh, the, the only thing I can think of is when they watch the, when the flood first come out and they're watching the, uh, remember that you find that footage and you're watching the yeah, video. It's, Jenkins, it's private Jenkins, yeah. Jenkins like recording. <laughs> and, uh, friend of uh, yours? Key, key, that one. And then he says, real pretty. Like he says something like that. And like his yeah. mouth moves to the totally wrong words. <laughs> like I, so like, I, I don't know. I never understood the, the fascination with, whoa, the stream just went crazy on my end, at least. Game did go crazy. Same thing on mine. Must be an internet spike. Or it's just a really cool visual effect. That's what I'm going to say. It's a psychedelic experience this week. Three for three Xbox and Paramount are hacking into the systems to ruin. The yeah, they heard it. <laughs> they heard what we have to say. Us, huh? yeah. this, is the, this is the bad day for the podcast. There Starting we go. Late. There, there we, we go. go. Yeah. Nice. Uh, um, the the one the corniest character I thought by far was the uh, the admiral there the kind of antagonistic admiral. Um, oh, the the Oni admiral. Yeah, it, it does bother me a little bit. I'm not like again. I'm open to where they're gonna take this story, but at the same time, I I remember I I, th I didn't think about this like a couple days after I watched it, and I was like. I literally have no idea what story they're about to tell. And I don't know if that's like a good thing or a bad thing. Like I, I like I watched that episode for 60 minutes and I was like, yeah, like there's nine episodes, I assume to go. And like, I don't know what they're about to. I know there's yeah. this stupid, I know there's this object, which I'm not like that thrilled about that. They just, they're making this random object, a plot point. They're making um, this like random magical object too. Yes. Like we don't, there, there's, there's nothing that ever implies that even in the canon that like there's items that help recover lost memories and yeah. also like do a whole entire EMP blast, but additionally like also yeah. like recharge your shit. Like, that thing makes no sense. There, to there's me. definitely a bunch of hints that it has already enhanced Master Chief's like abilities. Yeah. Um, and and I'm fine with that. There's been hints of that throughout the Halo series. I I just don't know where they're gonna go with this story, and I'm not like all that thrilled that even though like Oni and the USNC, there's always been themes of like them being like morally gray and, and especially on the Oni side, you know, perhaps going past the line and going, doing a little too much and stuff. Um, I, I, I think they just went way too hard with that. Like right off the bat, like, okay, episode one, master chief goes rogue. You know what I mean? Like already, like, like, <laughs> you know, like, like you didn't really introduce us to the character even really yet. And, mm -hmm. I thought they went a little too hard with the like, uh, like Spartans are like totally programmed and controlled and micromanaged aspect too. Like, like, like he took off his helmet and they freaked. Like, oh my god, he took off his helmet. Like, we can't see his camera now, you know. And I think, and I brought, I think, um, hitting Xperia. I'm pretty sure you've seen him a couple of times. He made a really mm -hmm. good point. I watched his review and he made an actually pretty decent one because whenever it came to like Chief going rogue and they're like hey uh activate uh soren protocol uh soren is a character that we will meet later on in the series mm -hmm. uh but in the books he's actually the first rogue spartan okay. uh, first and only um rogue spartan to actually do this so when was that where was that um, from i don't remember uh, that it was 
uh, I think it was Cole Protocol, I believe. I can't huh. remember. I read that one, but I can't remember it. It could, I could be wrong. I don't remember which book specifically. Uh, I may not have read it. I haven't read all the books, but he did bring it up. He was like, Soren is the first and only rogue soldier, um, to, you know, do this to the Oni, do this to Oni and UNSC. Um, and he goes, what's interesting about it is that this is kind of like our first experience to see how the UNSC and Oni will react to a rogue Spartan because now you see how much of a big deal it is. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it really is. If you think about it, like you've, gotten like these super soldier soldiers that you've enhanced and the only real way to technically take them down is have other spartans fight that spartan right yeah uh, and we kind of saw a little bit of that right with halo 5 they, but they did play up halo 5, they throwing punches so they did play up v- w- well i thought how dangerous spartans are they they did establish that very well yeah. like that these aren't just these aren't your generic soldiers or super soldiers like these are like super soldier times 100 mm-hmm. like 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 walking nuclear weapons basically yeah, yeah. and the, the, well, we only got a taste of it too i mean them against like elites and stuff like mm-hmm. that you know we saw how powerful the elites were for like a good solid few minutes and then they brought in the spartans mm-hmm. and the carnage that they're able to do with them as well um i never really liked the fight scenes with them. I, thought the, I thought the combat was a little bit weird and i also like i understand that it's live action um and this is the one gripe I had about the the armor is that they made them run so weird uh, because they can't really bring their arms up super high. The action and, like, does Chief, look questionable. Chief is like like any Spartans actually got full fucking range of his like of availability with their arms and like they're running and stuff like that. So it looked wonky and also the the obvious like CG cutoffs whenever yeah. you see like some pretty obvious like you know strong the you worst. Know, movements. The worst one for me was when I think it's a female Spartan. She's just she's just uh, the sniper when she drops down on top of the wall. She's like she comes down mm-hmm. out of the drop ship like when she and she lands on one knee like it looks mm-hmm. so like 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 PS2 era like CG <laughs> like, like not good at all. Like, yeah, like you could have just done that shot differently or just cut it altogether. Like it didn't even need yeah. to be there. Like it looks so bad that they should have been like this. This doesn't make it like we gotta do yeah Um, yeah no i I totally agree we'll we'll see i mean like i we should know already at this point that the show itself has had like has had multiple showrunners rather than such just like the main one like there is multiple people producing and doing stuff so maybe we'll see you know so many different types of changes uh and it's possible i mean like it's funny that i'm bringing this up but like even in like older Yu-Gi-Oh episodes you would know whenever they brought the badass like designer and the artist to like fill in for like the big good episodes Game of Thrones um, and, had that too like the, the really good directors would direct like three episodes a season and when you heard that they were directing those you automatically knew okay those three are going to be really good and the rest we'll see <laughs> uh, as far as hopes for the show though I, I really hope that like we do get to see the flood like I think with this level of violence and you know what we, what we've seen with things such as like the walking dead and um you know other like gory aspects of like you know science sci-fi and stuff like that i really hope we do get the flood in here they can rewrite the flood however they want in this one to be honest i personally wouldn't mind i hope they don't go super cheap and just turn them into literal walking dead zombies, zombies in this case. <laughs> they don't go that route um i really hope they get a little bit gritty into it i can't understand if it's like a little bit too mature but what? you know what what story do you think they're gonna tell? Because like I got thinking about it and I was like, do they plan to like right from the get go kind of try to establish the the story of like because in in the first like Halo trilogy, you know, we had the we knew about the forerunners and they were very like elusive and mysterious. And then like once that trilogy finished, we found out a lot more about their relationship with with humanity and all that stuff. Like, do you think now with this series they're gonna kind of have all that included from the start or or do you think they're gonna try to actually like like i literally don't know what story they're gonna tell with this show yeah. like, they're obviously have to go to halo at some point but like under what context and where does it go from there like like you said do they meet the flood there like what are mm-hmm. they gonna do here well, I mean, like, just, like, what we saw from, like, the contextual stuff and, like, the sizzle reels and stuff like that, where that one Spartan's, like, it's a sacred ring. Halo. Oh, God, I hate that so much. It makes me want to cringe. I just don't like her in general. Like, every time I see her face come up, I'm like, oh, 
I get like all Will Smithy about it, you know? Um, <laughs> That's going to be a thing for a long time now. I almost Will Smith um, this kid. <sighs> uh, but like, we know that they're going to go there, but like at the same time, it's concerning to like understand like w- how they want to introduce their forerunners because mm-hmm. the cool thing that Bungie did is that they, they left them so mysterious. Like we didn't really know who the forerunners were until like quite literally Halo 4 for the most part. Mm-hmm we didn't know who the forerunners were until yeah like they were they were not told and um like mark leto uh whenever he was talking about like hey what was like bungie's plan to do with uh halo 4 if there was a halo 4 they're like we were not going to do anything with the forerunners we were going to mm-hmm. keep them as elusive as possible make them still mysterious um versus like three for three is obvious like we love the forerunners but skidding mm-hmm. to that piece um which i don't hate either um yeah. but I really hope they kind of like make them mysterious because you're about to tell a really, really freaking huge story yeah. about like the abduction of children and Halsey's like uh, plans to like grow children at the year at the age of like six until like these young adults who are able to like jump out of spaceships from like you know outer out, out outside the atmosphere and land and like these I'm, like planets. I'm pretty sure based on what we saw in the first episode that they're going to go with the storyline that Cortana is like growing or Cortana Halsey is growing humans to then like turn into AIs as well. And that, that, yeah. that which is, I guess I'm fine with that. I, whatever. I don't, I guess I don't care yeah. that much, but that's, that's what happened in the story in the in canon is that she had, she had multiple, she just had one clone. She had multiple. She, clones. Those were clones. Yeah. I don't, I don't she, know. Like Halsey is absolutely like poop the bed multiple times trying to create a like Cortana. It's actually oh, yeah. kind of like super dark. Yeah. Um, I forgot what else I was gonna say about something about where they're gonna take the story. And, and it was it's actually really upsetting me. It was something that I thought thought about, and now now I can't think of what I was gonna say. My bad, I interrupted you. No, 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 no. What the heck was I gonna say? If we oh, were talking oh, just about the female, the female human that is that is uh, aligned yeah. with the covenant. So, f- first of all, and I said this in the trailer, I, I thought right away that I wasn't going to like this storyline because a it doesn't it doesn't fit with the covenant at, that, as we know them, and I know I know it's different canon, blah 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 blah. But a it doesn't fit. B she looks like a Star Wars character, like based on her like elaborate like dress up. and like. But uh, I'm pretty sure this is what they're going to do. And it, this is like typical, like I guarantee someone in the writer's room who like doesn't know Halo came up with this idea. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're going to tell this story of like Master Chief kind of, you know, coming to terms with the fact that, you know, humanity and the USNC, USNC and stuff as he learns the truth about the Spartan program and stuff, kind of showing the dark side of, of humanity. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And the, the dark side of the good guys. I, this is what's going to happen on the other side. I can almost swear. So she's she's this she seems to be a leadership figure of some kind. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if she's literally. I mean, did you think that it seems to me that they, the prophets were actually turning to her? That's how so, I took it. No, no, it, it really it really did look like that. And it's for like a, the reclaimer signal, like whenever Keach touches that artifact, the reclaimer's like symbol does pop up. And it looks like 343 Guilty Spark. You, you probably looked at it and you went, okay, that's an alien symbol. That's the that's the symbol for Reclaimer. Um, I think what probably happened, and I'm taking this from Hidden Xperia, what what we what do you think's happened and what I can agree with is that the prophets probably learned that hum, like the, no matter who you are besides a human, you cannot interact with any of the foreigner technology unless mm-hmm. you're a human. Um, so in this case, they probably like just found this girl and just been raising her, mm-hmm. uh, or at maybe in some point just straight up indoctrinated for like wipe her memories of some technology mm-hmm. to like just get her to do what they want. Um, and like to your point, right? I think I know where you're going with this. Is that like for her like legitimacy and her in her hierarchy, um, the prophets probably do look towards her, but they're probably manipulating her kind of the same yeah. way they did with Arbor. Is that they're just using her to get to like all ends uh whatever justifies it eats meets the end whatever yeah and i I think that's what her story is gonna be and i'm not exactly thrilled about it is 
it's going to be her on the other side. So as, as Chief learns about, you know, the, the, the dark side of humanity, it's going to be she starts off believing humans to be the enemy and this, that, and the other thing. Because she's studying, like, you know, she's reading the human book or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and as she gets more and more exposed to humans, I think she's going to be the character. Oh, you know, humans aren't so bad. You know, like, that's, that's going to be her story. I thought I at first I wanted to. She's going to be this villainous character who's at first wants to destroy humanity and she's helping the covenant. You know, she's a traitor. And then she's going to find, oh, and there's going to be a moment where she decides to help the chief or something like that, you know, or mm -hmm. save Miranda Keys or, or something like that. And I just yeah. like, I could already see that choreographed in one episode, you know, like I was yeah. like, oh man, like. It's like, crazy, man. I, I don't She's like that this character Harvard. exists. Yeah. Like, I don't like that this character exists at all to begin with. And then the Earth story is probably going to end up being like so basic and predictable. I'm just like, uh, no, you're right, man. And like, you know, I'll I'll take a shot for you whenever that happens because I 100% agree with you on that. I think that is what's going to happen is that she's just going to pretty much be this very predictable character who ends up like turning on the prophet. I bet you anything, prophets are going to be with her. And then at this point, there's going to be a point in time, maybe at like the end of the season where they just straight up betray her and they're like, bye, see you later, have fun, like dealing with the humans and stuff like that. And Chief is probably going to go like, I can't kill humans. That's yeah. not what we do. Well, um, I, I, I was thinking at like some key moment, like on Halo, you know, they're they're about to activate the Halos, you know, like they're mm -hmm. and she's going to do it. And then at, in that key moment, like the Chief rushes in and tells her, you know, like, you can't do this. You've been misled, you know, like this is going to destroy the universe and blah, blah, blah. blah. And she's going to be like, <gasps> Cortana. And that's uh, what? What? It's gonna be. It's gonna be him and Cortana that do, that tell him to do yeah. it too. And then she's gonna change her mind, you know. And then she's gonna split from the covenant, and then she's gonna die. And then she's gonna no tell us. She's gonna tell us. Well, she's gonna come to our side, and then she's gonna tell us everything about the covenant, you know. And like that'll no, be. She's gonna die. Oh. She's one hundred percent gonna die. I'm <laughs> maybe. Right maybe. I, I don't know which one's better. I. I, I don't know. There's been some rumors that um. That the elite uh, that was originally in that cave where that item or that artifact mm -hmm. was at, um, there's a rumor going around that they think he might be uh, the arbiter, like the this timelines, this universe is all. By the way, super soldiers with enhanced senses can't hear the elite standing ten feet away from them, who's like, <gasps> like freaking out as he's, he's watching. Quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, there's like six of them in there. Four. There's four Spartans in there, and none of them can just. None of them sense this. I don't think he was that loud. Not, not that even that he was loud, but none of them like swept the room or like, you know. <laughs> oh, no, 100 percent. They just like walked in. They're like, yeah, OK, around. Put my hand on Touch this thing. Things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One no. of the other things that killed me was. um, uh, What's her name's father? So they're the only two left, right? The The girl, the rebel girl there. Oh, okay. He, the, he's like yeah, this gen he's a general. He's like this grizzled general. And as this elite goes to kill his daughter, he starts shooting it. But instead of like trying to like distract it and like make it, you know, like, you know, he's shooting it. But instead of trying to like run and like keep his distance, he just immediately throws himself at this thing and runs up to it, just continually shooting and gets gutted by the energy sword. But she clearly knows it had. Yeah. And just like, why? It was just. He's a general. He's seen war before. He can't smart. come up with like pretty normal conclusions to right. just say like all right let's just maybe i wait should for the guys yeah, maybe i should keep my distance from this thing while i shoot it you know like nope just gonna straight up get gutted for no reason whenever they uh you know got to like the explanation of like hey why is there a chevy tahoe and ak-47 is like so utilized like the year 2500 and they're like oh we have a reason uh obviously because like you know you can actually flip over an entire you know unit of a fuck of a freaking vehicle uh if you're a big space lizard and obviously ak-47 just simple hollow rounds aren't gonna pierce shields i never that was pretty that cool when the elite lizard. just like shouldered that vehicle that was pretty cool i can guess it was pretty cool i don't know I'm, I'm, I, I, I i didn't like this i i I, big... I do think it was a bit odd though that the covenant attacked this outpost and it was literally just like 20 elites and we didn't see grunts we didn't see jackals we didn't see anything except just 20 the, elites it, what sucks what doesn't make sense is that there's only one um red elite which is typically like a squad leader yeah. um 
and there's like a freak ton of like common like elites in there so usually if it was like a tactile uh you know force it would be you know at least three elites one red leader and then the rest are like grunts and jackals for right. entryway but you know they obviously don't care about the show I just, so i heard yeah well yeah and stuff like that doesn't really bother me that much like you know like I'm a, I'm in, so I, I just, I'm it's weird that, that they introduced care. the covenant and then like like i'm not even sure that they established in that first episode that the elites and the prophets are like if i was an outside viewer and i didn't know like what the covenant were like did they mm-hmm. even establish that those two races are like together you know like yeah. like like there's or that there's more races because um i don't think that they really did and i, no, I heard they really didn't I heard a lot of confusion too, or I've heard some people like, oh, you know, Silver Team was dispatched to take down the Master Chief. I actually read that in a review, like of the first episode. And I was like, no, no, they weren't. Like Halsey point blank, like told them. Well, I like, mean, like it was probably an earlier review, right? They probably couldn't give away like all of the. Uh... No, it was like a post, like after it aired. Um, well, I mean, like they technically were, if you think about it. Like they weren't like told to go hunt him right now, but they were like, hey, they, you have to like make sure chief is in check and then halsey clearly was just like no don't do that yeah maybe that was just like a bad misrepresentation yeah. of like maybe they structured the sentence happened. poorly because i was like oh, well they clearly were told to just basically no. the spartans were gonna go ham on like all the marines if it came to it right there which actually would have been sick as that hell but cool. yeah <laughs> Um, that would be cool. I actually know i'm gonna give props actually to the unsc like props i think the marines look pretty dope yeah, they did with their armor. Yeah, they look really good. And seeing them all they, rush out like that was was cool. Yeah, their their gear, their armor, like the props for the weapons look great as well. Uh, I really liked what they've done with the UNSC because the UNSC probably felt more like military for Halo, uh, like than what we've seen with like past Halos, like Halo mm. Four and Halo Five. Yeah, like Halo Four and Halo Five Marines look like obvious they would they would look like the stereotypical donald trump like space marine <laughs> get up. um I, if i could put it like that way um but i think they look great yeah uh, i i was really satisfied with marines this look i am gonna be like severely disappointed if sarge like isn't a character in this like like literally if sarge is which i didn't see oh, in any 100%. of the trailers but yeah. if they don't use sarge like they they missed something like so mm-hmm. bad like and there, there really was no. It, this could be good. It could be bad. The, I will say the first episode takes itself very, very seriously. There was not like one even like, like, like kind of humorous jab at another character or anything. It was like, it took itself really seriously, and I think it could benefit from somebody like Sarge, who was you know cracking. Like, imagine if Sarge mm-hmm. was down there, like as those Marines are rushing out, being Sarge, you know, like say you know cracking jokes about trying to like you know take down the master chief and how they're gonna do it you know like that would have been pretty entertaining no for sure what i dislike the most is that the the show doesn't take time to like humor itself either and like this is coming off like the trail end of like castlevania where it's just like the show knows when it needs to be serious and it knows whenever it has characters who know how to break that ice like belmont and alucard whenever they want to like say something stupid they will Mm because that's their character it's just like there's no character in that in this show and you know maybe we'll get it eventually or something like that but um you know i I really hope that like with the next few episodes we kind of get a little bit more uh digestible information especially with cortana i think we should be seeing cortana in the next episode we have been confirmed that we're seeing soren in episode two um so here here's to whatever happens with that because i'm i'm interested to see what extra they could do with he's the gonna die building. in the same episode he gets introduced in 10 bucks he's gonna cover <laughs> for master chief and he's gonna die in the process there's no way he, they made him look too cool to make him die <laughs> that's what you think a leather jacket on a body oh. of martin mark seven armor oh, there's Ober- no way they're oberin oberin martell says you can kill really cool characters very quickly were you a game of thrones person <laughs> i don't remember I'm not a game with those. Oh, okay. Person. He's like yeah. one of the coolest characters in the series, and he's like introduced and thrown away in like the same few episodes. <laughs> not the, not quite the same, but it's very. No, quickly. he's not wrong. That that 
uh, Scottish guy in the beginning of the episode. He was kind of cool. He's like, you can't kill. Oh Scotland. yeah, yeah. No, that's that I thought, cool. When, and they randomly just killed him off screen. Like you just see him like laying yeah. on the ground dead. I was like, that kind of sucked. I thought he was gonna stay around. You know, like yeah, that would have been pretty cool. Because his story in the beginning about the Spartans was really cool. Yeah, you you see this tenured veteran dude, and he's just like, yeah, he's so badass, he dies. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh. But, um. What was I going to say to kind of like end my thoughts on this? Um, damn. That was your, that's, your, that's your review. Your one word review. Damn. Take Just it as you will. That, yeah. Is damn. it a good damn or a bad damn? It's up to you. It was like when uh, Chris Rock got slapped. He goes, damn. Was <laughs> Is that this? actually what he said? Yeah. Damn. I think he said damn. <laughs> I think he said damn. I'd be wrong though. I've only watched the video like maybe like five times now. Like how does it say ten thousand? Um all right, so transition away from Halo probably for ten minutes. Uh, so I, I wanted to get the other Xbox. Oh. What? Go ahead. All right. So one of the original Bungie developers who did all of the design work for the show did give kudos to it, and I never noticed it, but uh, the Forerunner ship on high, like high charity itself looked fat. like it looked great. It didn't look mm -hmm. exactly like it needed to, but it looked great. It looked like a big ass jellyfish for some reason, but I liked it. But um, I never noticed it until it was pointed out. The one of the uh, original Bungie devs who did all the design work for Halos one through three, uh, he gave a shout out to the show. He goes, um, "It's really great to see Chief on the silver screen, but it was really great to see like how true to the core that they that the show stuck with, at least on the Covenants." side of things elites look bad their armor was not on par at all and there's a few missing pieces but all of high charity in the forerunner ship uh the forerunner dreadnought ship that's used to like create the arc in halo 3 on on earth everything was there like everything mm -hmm. looked perfect i was like dude that's actually pretty cool i will give props for that i thought i'm excited to see that i agree like, the covenant ship looked well and i'm glad you just brought up bungie not because i want to talk about bungie exactly but I saw this brought up after the fact, and I just wondered if you had thoughts on it. Don't you think it's kind of bizarre? And I know all of us have been just like ragging on on you know the the content speed for Halo Infinite lately, but don't you think that it's bizarre that there's been literally no Halo Infinite to Halo television series cross promotion or like kind of like what they did with Halo Four and Four and Dawn? Not even like a like an LTM in the game was or like a like a celebratory emblem or like anything you know like like just something that says like hey this is a big deal you know we have a, a halo live action tv show like go go watch it paramount <laughs> i i totally think it was a missed opportunity arcane allowed allowed streamers to watch the i don't know if it was the first episode or the first two episodes on stream it was the first two episodes and i yeah. thought that was brilliant and I yeah. really think that they missed a big, big opportunity with uh, with content creators here to mm -hmm. at least let them watch the premiere uh, with their communities. Their that would have been very exciting. Horrible CGI, Mayor. What, what, yeah. what, what can you expect them to do with the rest of the $10 budget they have to enable Twitch drops? Yeah, uh, anything. I mean, I, I just think I agree, that, though. You're right. I, I do think it's been a net positive for Halo, even if the show isn't like... like I, I do feel that way. Like Even though the show yeah. is like, yeah, yeah we're picking it, it apart. I think it's a it has already had a positive effect on the Halo IP and as long as it doesn't totally just I don't know fall off a cliff in quality and just be absolutely terrible um mm -hmm. I I think it's having a positive effect on on Halo. Yeah, you're right. Uh, like I said, I was watching with my buddy never cared about Halo, never cared about the games or anything like that and he he loved it. So mm -hmm. Um, you're right. You know, it has had a positive effect. It sucks to be like, you know, us, you know, long time. <laughs> it sucks series to be us being absolutely pooped on, you know, and some people will tell us to be grateful for that. It's just like, no, I can. I don't have to be grateful. I don't. I, don't... I, I agree with you. And like, I don't want to gatekeep. I don't want to be like, you know, this isn't my halo and, you know, this isn't the real. Halo. But, but at the same time, I definitely reserve my right to like critique it and be like i don't understand why they made this decision but, but i don't want to tell people who are totally enjoying it for what it is that they shouldn't i mean that's oh, good for you if you're loving it keep watching it like if that makes you more of a fan of the things i love i will be 100 for it and like 
we can have like you know future game night sessions where we can just play like the show like play the game together and like like talk to you about that like that kind of stuff is always intriguing yeah again though it's just you know as a core fan it's just like i think what most people don't like to do is just like really look deep inside of these kinds of things and say oh they really didn't believe in like the core concept of the story to just keep true to it and stuff like that so it is what it is so i get it Microsoft is playing the a very very safe game on this one, so it's just like what what can you do about it? You know, mm-hmm. it, it's better to play it safe than to be this bold. And this is you know one opportunity to open up many others. So who mm-hmm. knows? Maybe we'll get another. We hopefully we get another Halo Legends. Hopefully we get you know more through to core uh, shows that are for like hardcore fans. Years of War uh, because yeah, let's see what happens with that. <laughs> It was interesting. I was with my um, my ex girlfriend, and we were, we went to go uh, to like a strawberry field. And she's like, "Hey, so how's like work?" Told her that Gears Esports was canceled, and she like she likes Gears. Like yeah. that's our that's our, that was our game together. Like we that I got her introduced to, and she loves it. And um, she was really sad to hear that Gears Five was just not a good game because it's her favorite. <laughs> I mean, I, I like Gears Five, but I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying on the professional front is not not delivered and all that stuff. I, yeah. I I just think the franchise is insanely underrated, period, as far as the multiplayer goes. Significantly. Yeah. Um, I heard, I've been seeing some rumors that, like, uh, I know it's not on the agenda list, but I've been seeing some rumors that um, the, the boys upstairs, specifically P3 himself, haven't been really satisfied with how the Coalition's been handling Gears. Um, I, could, I could believe that. Because I've heard that they're that. working on, like, several games. And that makes me think that, like, I mean, that that can happen one of two ways, right? Like, one is you're being extremely, you're everything you're doing is working extremely well, and you deserve to like creative freedom to do whatever you want. Like, go ahead and expand. Or mm-hmm. it means eh, things aren't going so great. Maybe we should kind of try dabbling with something else and see what mm-hmm. happens. And I, I think it's. I, I still think the coalition will be making the next gears game for sure. Like I, I don't doubt that, mm-hmm. but I could totally see you being correct. That yeah, no, no, I think so. I think that they will still be doing it, but I think there's going to be a major uh, studio change in like leadership and like expectations going forward. I mean, we've seen pretty much almost everybody leave. Like Rod Ferguson's yeah. longer there. The studios lost so many people that were already like you know pioneers of like the Gears Four introduction of things, and then just Gears Five obviously fell off. You know. Um, go ahead. Oh no no you go. Ahead. I, I'm good with that. I was gonna say, you know, Microsoft has certainly demonstrated this, but also Amazon and I want to say uh, Google, like several you know large companies. I think we're seeing just actually how hard it is to start and scale a game development studio right now because we're seeing like absolute monstrous companies with basically blank checks for budgets try to start game studios um you know like there was a lot of talk maybe a week or two ago about how the initiative which was supposed to be microsoft's like naughty dog basically it was supposed to be their quadruple a studio and they Mm -hmm. were hiring people from naughty dog from sony santa monica from uh, Kojima Productions, like the the some of the best you know AAA talent in the industry, to build this new studio called the Initiative, and and there was all this talk, uh, like you said, about uh, you know people leaving quickly and it not being what they expected it to be, and having trouble scaling up and hiring enough people. We saw Google, uh, their their game studios never produced a single game. Uh, Amazon put out that shooter Crucible and it was dead like literally within like three months the studio closed down like that I think that's why we're seeing Microsoft do what they're doing where it's like you know building these studios is not easy like you look at like 343 you look at the coalition I'm not saying they're failures because I don't think they are but they've had growing pains absolutely Um, and then it's like well we spent you know 500 million dollars to build this studio and we're not getting you know two billion dollars in return why don't we just buy somebody who's already established and comes with all these ips and it's a lot easier than trying to build it's like because it's so hard yeah. it really is and i think the biggest opportunity and this is just coming based off of like my experience working with microsoft at the time i wasn't a dev but like i even see it even at like just like smaller levels of like microsoft hiring it's just that game dev like 343 and tc like coalition they don't 
by your actual like employees. They never full time. They never turn people. They contract into a ton employees. of people, right? A lot. Like there are more contractors working for Microsoft than there probably is actual full time employees working for Microsoft. And the reason why isn't that Microsoft doesn't want to give out those opportunities. They have to spend a lot of money to make those roles happen. Mm-hmm. And it's just like the scalability internally is a pain in the butt already. So like well, I get it. And you need to work like very very quickly. Like like it's like okay, so to hire somebody and to get somebody integrated and train them and blah 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 mm-hmm. blah blah, it's gonna take six months. And that you and, get into and, the development of these games, and it's like I need the content now. I need somebody who can design weapon skins today. And the the hard the, the not a hard part. This is a good thing. It's that's a pro, not so much a con. But it does have its like disadvantages too. Is that Microsoft takes a very long time with its employees that are new to really help them embrace the culture and uh, develop what uh, Satya Nadella calls a uh, an, uh, a a. Uh, a growth mindset mm-hmm. growth mindset is his way of really trying to connect uh with his like employees to talk about the cleaning of the okay yes hold on one second they're trying mm-hmm. to throw away my cinnamon roll and i don't know if it's you <laughs> that's, oh, that's incredible Not even taking a second to give them that opportunity. I'm responding instantly. That that was a that was like a twelve dollar cinnamon roll, man. Um, so uh, no, they they he, they take their time. All of Microsoft HR and managers, specifically managers, have it hard, and I I empathize hard with here. Is that they really have to be on top of every single one of their team members' uh, mental capacities on top of their own while also fulfilling so many different types of duties of what growth right. mindset is. Every every quarter, Microsoft has its employees literally fill out these things called connects and their uh, their monthly business reviews of their performance. What did you do? What do you think you uh, contributed to the business? And what do you think uh, is an opportunity for you to get better at? They have you do these things. I freaking hated doing it myself. <laughs> I, I don't like writing about myself and nobody yeah. does. Um, but the, the, the thing is, is that as we turn this into like game development, like every Microsoft employee has to do this. I don't know about vendors or anything like that, uh, contractors, but like internally it, Microsoft gives so much like flexibility for like just helping its employees take care of themselves, Mm -hmm. um, and the company take care of them that like, if you're an employee there, like, how can you, uh, you know, continue to like make things work the next week you know how are you picking up on tasks and stuff like that and people are still working from home Mm -hmm. and it's still a process so you know what i want to translate all that you know be all that conversation into is that i think microsoft allows its employees to take a lot of time to itself and personally and based what i've seen still see is that people take advantage of it too Mm -hmm. they will absolutely just like ride the wave of what it is free microsoft money and then leave did you see, by yeah. the way, sorry, go ahead, continue. Oh, go, 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 go. You, you know who Frank O'Connor is, right? Creative director of the entire Halo franchise at Frank 343. Yeah. yeah, Stinkles. Uh, did you see his quote today about Halo Infinite? Oh, I sent it to you, but I don't know if you had time to read it because you were. Uh... Yeah, uh, I mean, let me, you let sent me, it to me. Let it? me paraphrase it for you. This is totally random. He was asked in an interview about the uh, the opportunities um, he got asked, like, you know, there's thousands of people who've requested to use the Halo IP for various things. I and just his, read it. And this is like New York Times, I think, or Washington Post, like very prominent uh, with the source of it. Um, and, and he said, he said, it, what, 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 the, what does it say? It's a lot like porn or something like it's that? You know it like, when you see it. It's kind of like porn. O'Connor said with the like, opportunities what? that ultimately make sense for Halo. I have you a know feeling you see it. I have a feeling that he is going to be taking like a two week vacation after that. <laughs> because... Vacation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, they, they actually like will probably pay him for that, too. They, uh, they, like, they probably him. will. And I'm fine with that. But it's just I read that and I was like, seriously, like that's that's okay. ever since Frank O'Connor like took over like a lot of this stuff. He's just been a downward spiraling character. Well, I met he, him. <laughs> He's never front and center either. His job is like like a leadership position, and you never hear from him anymore. Well, if you think about it, we never really hear from anybody at like the leadership positions. Like, That's true. In this case, for Frank, it's just 
you know, a lot of it is back like behind the scenes kind of stuff. Like we're lucky if we can hear Bonnie Ross ever talk about Halo, and it's usually ever in front of like a wide, wide audience. So like E3, like basically. Yeah. Like we literally just heard from Joe State, like mm-hmm. honestly, like yesterday, I think. Where, um, you know, they interviewed him and they're like, We we want to be transparent, but we can't. He's like, churn happens, things happen, and we don't want to like over we don't want to promise things we can't deliver. Mm-hmm. And like literally, whenever they did promise things that they can't deliver, it was <laughs> It was Chris, what's his name, from um, uh, like the original Halo Infinite development. Like he promised things, and those things never came to happen. And it's just like he makes a good point. Peter Mello, you, you can't promise things and just like expect the community not to hold you accountable. They know that. That was like I mean, hey, I think he said it best. Doom Eternal is an insane. They, Doom Eternal is one of my favorite games of the last five years. Probably well, one of my one favorite of games, games ever. The past like, five years. But they. Um, they announced like really early on that they were going to do an invasion mode, like a la like Dark Souls. And um, everything that that game delivered has been incredible. Everything that the campaign, the expansions, the master, like everything that they've done. But they they ended up canceling invasion mode and and people still to this day, three years later, you know, man, I really wish they did invasion mode. And they were when they announced that it was done, they they were honest about it. They're just like, no, it's we we can't do it. Like, we're not doing it anymore. But they overpromised and people will never forget it ever. Yeah. Even though that. They literally delivered on 999 out of 1,000 other promises. Like they they surpassed expectations. That yep. one thing that they promised. Oh, one, that point zero, uh, that point nine percent missing. You know. Yeah. It's so dumb. I, I love the internet, and I also hate it. I wish Twitter wasn't free sometimes, but I'm very appreciative that I can sometimes you know see some really fun <laughs> stuff on, on the internet. Oh God. It. It sucks too because, like, as development gets bigger and like better, like bigger and like harder to like do, like the work, the the industry itself is just at like a weird standstill right now with games Mm -hmm. at the moment. Like both, even in esports, to like even like these newer games have just been cooking for like the past maybe five to ten years, and we're finally seeing like that come to fruition. But all we can hope is that you know the game works now. (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. It really is crazy. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I will. I will briefly mention this, and if we want to talk about it, we can. Because I know you know a lot of stuff about cloud. Um, yeah. so Xbox formally announced the cloud gaming division last week, and it's headed up by a former Valve employee, actually. Um, and I just wanted to get your thoughts on it because the the purpose of it seems to be to develop games specifically for cloud. So basically games that are built you know not not to bring the newest assassin's creed game to the cloud or, or whatever it's to build games for xbox on the cloud yeah. I, I just want to know what do you think of that because i know you have a lot of thoughts and insight into, into that like do you think that's a thing in the future like cloud exclusive games or like what do you think is going on here no i don't think that they'd be cloud exclusive i'm pretty sure there's going to be some form of like installation required for this kind of thing to work i mean like it the way that i'm thinking they're going to handle cloud is very similar to like what they've tried to accomplish with crackdown crackdown was not meant to be a game it was meant to be a stress test i'm gonna say that's why mm-hmm. it was a different concept if anything the original because yeah no crackdown three. Oh, okay okay because i remember like crackdown three like xbox had literally nothing but to promote that awful 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 game yeah but disappointing yeah, the tech behind it, though, magnificent, because they were able to really push the game's memory capacity off of the original Xbox One console itself. And the original Xbox One console, like in terms of like performance, as we already know, was absolutely awful. Mm-hmm. What they what they want to do with cloud, you know, it's not sure what it is, but I really do imagine that the, that the capabilities are endless here because now like, we can imagine like maybe the scope of an MMO that is no longer confined to the restraints of the PC or the amount of uh, servers powering just the joining server. Like, how many PCs can we now power for this, like, super big-ass, like, gaming server that everyone can join in on? You know, that opens up the possibilities. How many more polygons can you include into the design of, you know, specific items and stuff into, the, uh, into it? Like, quite literally, cloud gaming is has so much potential to be more powerful than any console or any PC that we have today. And the only variable that 
we as consumers have is just internet latency. And that's quite literally it. Um, so I, I'm really interested to see what they can accomplish here. Um, I, I hope they don't go like super low in ambition here. I think they do really need to like kind of show is like something that's valuable for it. And I do believe that uh, Kojima has like expressed a lot of interest in developing for the cloud as well. That's what. So hopefully, hopefully we'll see something cool come from his brain too, because Th I think been, there's a lot of possibilities. There's been rumors for about a year now. Um, and well, this this is this part is virtually confirmed. So Kojima was developing a Stadia game. He was very interested in, in cloud. And um, we all know what happened with Stadia's actual publishing and development. Uh, it fell through. Like at the very last minute, the deal fell through. And the rumor is that Xbox has stepped in and um, that that's going to be the centerpiece of this cloud division. And that'll be like the big announcement to get people's attention. This was the first step was to announce it. But then maybe like an E3 in a few months to show. Uh, and what I've heard is that it's a horror game, kind of like a short maybe even episodic uh, horror game. Maybe like that probably won't be longer than like, I don't know, six, eight hours at max. Could maybe be like part of uh, Project Mira is what it's called. Whatever it is that um, Ninja Theory is working on. Like it's a possibility that Kojima and Ninja Theory, like uh, Ninja Theory can partner together. I don't see why they would. I mean, he has his own studio now, but you never know. I, I think that's, I think that's exciting. Yeah. Um. When you said something about polygons, it reminded me. I'm never going to forget this. Uh, this was like a 20-year-old forum post that I read. I think it was like when the PS2, maybe PS3 was announced. I think it was PS3 when it was first announced. Somebody actually posted, like not trolling. This was a long time ago, obviously. Uh, how are they going to fit all those polys through the cable? That was that was the <laughs> entire post. Like He believed that polygons were being like injected through cables I, I i don't know my but. my recent my i think most favorable memory about polygons is whenever frank o'connor was explaining how master chief got his helmet changed from halo 3 to halo 4 while in like stasis for four years uh after the events of halo 3 it was like the like the it goes yeah. from uh mark 7 to whatever mark version that Matt chief's helmet was chief yeah. had the most unique one in the halo 4 or 5 but he explained it in like a uh, reset era forum, and uh, so he asked the question like, "Hey, how did they like? Why did y'all change this helmet instead of just saying like, oh, we rebranded, we wanted to change hmm. look and chief?" Um, he went on this whole tangent, just like, "Well, because of the amount of polygons we now have to work with in development, <laughs> we wanted to be able to really tell a story through that method." So uh, uh, during the entirety and the, the emptiness of time that we don't see of Chief Chin Cryo, Cortana used. Uh, micro bots to upgrade his helmet while he's in trial. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So uh, awful. Uh, so let's give let's give PlayStation some some attention here. So positive attention for once. Maybe. Um so the rumor is, and it's pretty credible, that Sony will announce their uh Xbox Game Pass competitor, or just Game Pass, I should say. Their competitor to Game Pass this week, and I've heard that they actually have multiple announcements this week. That it's not just, not just this, but they may accompany it with game announcements or you know a number of things, I guess. But um, tell me what you've heard. But I've heard that there's are going to be multiple tiers of this. Yeah. Um. um so multiple tiers yeah. of pricing. And what do you, what do you think that's going to look like in the end? What do you think? What do you think they're going to offer? Basically. I think that they're going to uh, offer. The cloud version, it's just tier one. That's the cloud okay. one. I think tier two is the higher paid version. I think that will be fifteen dollars an hour, uh, fifteen dollars okay. per month. Uh, and I think that the top, the tier three, will include include PS Plus, PS Now, downloadables, uh, all on that. And I think I do think that's going to be like thirty to 20, 25 to thirty bucks. Do that's, you think that's my speculation? Do you think that they roll in? Um... Because one of the things that Sony has long been criticized for and has been rumored to be working on a solution to is backward compatibility of some kind. They have a large library of PS4, PS3, PS2, PS1 games that are virtually lost. Um, what I see happening, perhaps, is that they roll into maybe the highest tier, like you mentioned, maybe like a $30 version, kind of like what Nintendo does and offer like a limited selection of, you know, subscribe to this and you get you know basically all sony's first party games of 
their entire existence or something mm-hmm. like that. Is that have you thought of something like that? Do you think that's likely I think or that's doable? Yeah, like uh, it's such a it's so weird to hope that like they're able to like bring back a um what was it called with the Wii? The uh, virtual console oh, God. for like, the PlayStation. Oh, oh, I thought you were gonna say something else. Never mind. Oh, it'd be cool if they were able to bring I back. I thought like, you were gonna talk about the actual PlayStation. Because Sony the did that. The, 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 no, well, Sony did. The remember the ball Nunchuck? on the end of the? Oh, PS Move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought they that's what you're gonna them, say. Though. I was like, please, no, do not go there. They still use them though. Actually, not gonna lie, I thought those were the coolest little remotes ever. Oh. They, looked, they looked cool. They the looked cool. I don't really care much for how they or whatever. Thought they were cool. Um. I thought it was very PlayStation. That's why I liked them. I was it like, was. you know what? No doubt. If it if there's anyone who knows what they're making, it's PlayStation hardware. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, as, as far as like what they're able to do with um, uh, backwards compatibility, uh, you know, I didn't think about it, but I think it does make sense. Like tier three will enable like their virtual console, like mm-hmm. back back catalog games. Who knows? Maybe they'll do it the same way Nintendo is, is that they'll slowly just sort of like upgrade some of these consoles they do or these games. Um, so much what Start they do with PS1 or online. something and then expand to PS2. Yeah, I think they'll probably do something like that. Who knows? I hope they do, but also don't at the same time because I would like to see that they're actually invested in backwards compatibility, um, but also not charge you an arm and a leg for it. I, so I if they do bring it back, they need to make it accessible for individual pur- purchase too. Let's see, that's what. <sighs> That's why that's why I'm ready to be disappointed because I I don't see them all of a sudden bringing back like their entire catalog and being able to just like pick up and buy Ape Escape if I wanted to. You know what I mean? For like the PS1. Like I I would love to be wrong. I would love to be wrong. I would love for them to be like, "Hey, every first party Sony game that you know we published um and they could obviously work with other um developers and publishers as well, you know, like konami ps1 games there's a million metal gear solid i mean you know classic ps1 game it'd be awesome to have that to be able to buy that um on playstation 5 or or whatever mm-hmm. um I, I i personally don't have the faith in sony that that they will do that i i just i would love to be wrong but i i could see them taking the easy way out and being like you're gonna get a collection of games for free with your subscription um and that still could be a great value i mean there's a million great games but I, I don't see them pushing like the boundaries and I hope I hope to be wrong but I mean I will give them the benefit of the doubt like if it came down to PS3 games understandable the architecture and design for that system was so flawed it was per- like great hardware for its time but it was so flawed yeah. which is like why it struggled so hard to capture like you know not good games i'm not saying a ps had bad games but it's just like it had such a hard time being a multi-platform console mm-hmm. um like it, it there there's actual legitimacy and even digital foundry like the piece of it was just like the architecture for the ps3 games that they're developing it just they're almost nearly impossible to put over yeah if they're able to somehow port those games and let them run natively on a ps5 i will give them like so much w's so much credibility for it i mean it, i would to say congratulations you solved your own problem is like kind of funny but like in hindsight you never know where your technology is going to go and yeah. they clearly didn't future proof the ps3 and it's, no. and it's software and went forward and they they were looking at the ps3 as being revolutionary i remember them talking about the cell processor and it was going to be all the difference in the world and like the people were going to be able to do things on the ps3 that were literally not capable anywhere else and then it was like okay not only is it impossible, not impossible, insanely hard to, to to develop for, but all those things that were promised were really not fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I, they, they did they did what Sony does. They they tried to go all in on you know cutting edge, and it, it backfired in the case of the PS3. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I mean, I, well, I would be ha- up at least. It did, it, did, it did eventually pick itself back. Oh, that's a ton of great games for it. Um, but that was the generation that they that know, was dropped their, the that ball. Was their slip up. Right. Yeah, that was their slip up. That was their Xbox One. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I would I would definitely be happy with some type of. Yeah, I mean, bringing back the classic titles to, to not only in the subscription service, but to be able to purchase, too, would be really great. And then take it a step further. Imagine being able to stream to stream them, play them on the cloud. I mean, yeah. I would love to be able to play those classic games on a PC 
um, streaming them to a, a, a PC. That, that'd that's, be amazing. That's what I was going to ask you. Do you think the subscription is going to come to PC players? No. <laughs> do, will, will I will I celebrate if it if they do? Yes. Yeah. Do I think I that they do? Uh, that's my tempered expectation is that it's not going to come to PC. I still think that Sony needs to set a goal that they will bring all of their games because they're they're starting to bring them to PC, but it's very hit and miss, and it, you don't know when what games are going to come to PC. You don't know when they're going to come. I think what Sony needs to do is just come out and say every game that we release, first party game, will be available on platform of choice: Epic Game Store, Steam, whatever. I don't care on PC twelve months after it releases on on PlayStation. That's plenty of time for exclusivity on their console. Would I prefer it to be shorter? Yes, but I don't think Sony would. I don't ever see Sony being like, yeah, OK, we're going to release it same day. So I'm mm-hmm. giving them the. Yes, Sony, I, mean, I understand you're going to be a stick in the mud. Everybody else does it. They could just say, oh, I, I know they can and I wish they would, but I, I don't think that they will. So just my my in their ball court, my compromise in, in the Sony mindset is yeah well we need to sell ps5 so but we also need to get on pc so 12 months you know like that seems viable like mm-hmm. and because the game's still gonna be it's not like it's forgotten yet um but if you really wanted to play it you would have played it on ps5 at that point probably yeah yeah so oh, i'm hoping well i think we'll get the announcement tomorrow too it's almost tuesday that's typical news break time Everybody is ready for their Tuesday news. We'll see. They definitely need a Game Pass competitor. So uh, I am curious to see how much they um, how much how much they bring it. I'm I'm picturing it to be all their first party titles included. Um, you know, a lot of indie games probably mixed in there. Uh, Destiny 2 will probably be in there now that they basically own Bungie. Um, that make me play, but that make me play Destiny. If like all of like Destiny like content was yeah. there, you know, yeah, it's a good, it's a good value. Um, I I imagine they'll grab some other big third party games. They probably forked out some money for some existing third party games. I don't I don't know what offhand. I'm not going to take a guess. Oh, well, they can't be getting too much now that Microsoft owns everything. See that that's that's the thing, it, and that's what I was t- saying to to Maz is like they are. They're literally three, four years behind the competition right now. So they're to catch up. It's going to take them a while. You know, like when Hulu came out, it was like, the, you know, like it was on Netflix uh, the, had, had such a, uh, you know, lead time. You know, it's like it's going to take all like years. And now some of these services are have caught up to Netflix and stuff. But it mm-hmm. takes it took like five years. So, yeah, yeah. It, uh, we'll see. At least Mixer didn't catch up. <laughs> uh yeah beam i should have kept it beam that's why um mixer was such a weird name i hated it I well it's because you can't how do you search engine op- optimize B- mixer it's impossible like that, that's terrible anyway uh so there was i, I don't want to get too much into the n- nitty-gritty i guess of the apex legends leak this week but Mm-hmm. Uh, more looking at it from the perspective of leaks in general and your your thought on leaks because in the case of the apex leak more than two oh. years of content leaked out so nine new legends a new map like five or six new weapons like literally the next two years of the game everything leaked and i just i just what, what's your and everyone's different i guess but what's your take on leaks you think that they're they are are do they have a positive or a negative effect on games? I think it depends, honestly. Yeah. Like, it really depends on, like, what exactly is being leaked. Um, in this case, like, CD Projekt Red stuff with, like, Cyberpunk, like, leaks, uh, definitely not so great. Um, mm-hmm. Not great for them, obviously. Uh, not great for the industry. And I'm not a big Jason Schreier fan, so like he's like the king of just like reporting video game leaks. He's done, mm-hmm. I think, probably more bad than good, despite the fact that he does report on like really bad things that happen internally. His is normally well. internal studio stuff, yeah. Yeah, but he also does leaks for games at the same time, and he hasn't really been reporting those major leaks lately. Usually, you'll see uh, like Nibel do it. You'll see uh, more internal. Tom Henderson like, does a lot of uh, game leak stuff yeah 
Yeah, you'll see they'll, they'll do it. Jason doesn't really do it that much anymore, and I think it's probably because he got a seasoned assist. Finally. He works for um, well, well, he works for Bloomberg now too, which is a much different audience, like in general. Yeah, yeah. and Bloomberg is also awful. Um, <laughs> they they're the ones that wrote the "if you make three hundred thousand dollars less, uh, get rid of your dog" opinion. What? <laughs> you see that? No. They actually wrote a they actually wrote an article where they said. Uh, if you make less than three hundred thousand dollars in twenty twenty two, here's what you need to do to save money. And it was like, what paying for your dog? Save money get, on get, your dog. <laughs> get rid of your dog altogether. Eat. Like, well, get like, rid of your eat. kids. Yeah. I mean, the dog's cheaper than the kids. I'm pretty sure it was like they they had four bullet points. I'm pretty sure they had more stuff in there, but they had they they were also ex- like saying eat um lentil with l- lentil. I forgot what it was called. That ramen it's basically noodles, like, basically. Basically ramen noodles. And it's just like, uh, and at the very end, they're like, no one said this was going to be easy. And I'm just like, bro, if I had $300,000 a year, man, <laughs> I'd be on an island right now doing yeah. something there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, they, uh, jokes aside. Um, also, I was curious, is there a Rocket League team for Nets? Is there mayor? I don't think there is anymore. I think maybe there was at one point. I think what we have, what do we have right now? We have four honor. Um, and I think we still have a due process team. I could be wrong about that though. I, I think I it's know, two man. official teams right now. Um, what are we talking about? I'm so sorry. I went on a tangent there. Uh, with leaks. Oh. Leaks, yeah. I think they're I think they're more bad than good to be honest. They're good for you if you're a player, but I don't think they actually really do anything. But you know, I want to look at the bright side of things here. You know, maybe leaks are a good way for studios and like uh production and uh you know other stuff to kind of like get some insight on sentiment. Sentiment yeah. is really important these days. I think I, I see a lot of I, I think you're right. That's definitely depends on what's leaked. If you have a single player game, a story driven game, and your story is leaking out on the internet, then that's going to be extremely like too. it's going to be extremely deflating. Yeah. And and I do feel bad for the development studios in those cases, because you put like literally your heart and soul into writing this story. Um, that That is the main th- part of your game is the story mm-hmm. that you're telling. And then that story, I mean, I, I will totally admit, and, you know, I know Witchy in chat knows that this is how I feel. I did not play The Last of Us 2 because of what I read about the story. And I, this is coming from somebody who loved The Last of Us. Um, mm-hmm. And had I played it, like, I, I may have felt differently about it. But, like, they literally lost my sale because of that leak. And, like, yeah. I can't blame the developer for that. I understand why that's extremely unhealthy for game developers. Um, I mean, there's a leak. There's a thing. A leak. Speaking of leaks, <laughs> there's a leak out there right now about World of Warcraft, about how it yeah, seems. One, yeah, it seems that they totally rewrote their story, like like a few months before the most recent expansion came out, because it like something leaked, and they were so mm-hmm. like upset about it that they basically botched their entire story in a tizzy trying to rewrite it. Um, so but but in the case of a game like Apex. I'm not sure that it's really like a horrible thing. I mean, like, because they can I always mean, all come... the things that you mentioned sound like their expectations out of a life right. game. Like, you kind of expect that. Kind it of was like it was a lot of headlines for the game, <laughs> and they can always come out and say, "Hey, we canceled that weapon. It didn't work out." Like, it, it hey, we canceled this legend. It didn't work out. And, and I don't think that's really a negative. Um, and, and I also think that developers have to be really careful about. I mean. Developers get upset about leaks, but they also a lot of them <coughs> three four three um, don't don't communicate. And it's like, well, people are going to be like, there is a community out there that is desperate to hear what you have to say and what you're doing. And if you're not feeding them, and the only thing that they can get is is the leaks, do you, do yeah. you blame do you blame them? I mean, you know, like it, it, it's you gotta you gotta you have to you have to keep a conversation going because there's ones that the players want to be involved in that conversation and i mean i i hope a dev can look at a leak and go wow it's our community's fault no that's obviously a bad representation of how y'all have security and as well as uh policies and procedures in place within your own studio Mm -hmm. like it's so easy to leak things out like there's also like you know things that you can do to make sure stuff doesn't get leaked out and that can be tracked pretty easily yeah um yeah. so it's just 
you know, it's honestly the studio's fault for not maintaining That's what I mean. higher. And, and it, it's yeah. going to happen. In 2022, it's going to happen. I mean, all it takes is one developer having a bad day, getting pissed at their manager at work, and then they go on their Discord with their buddies, and they're like, you know what? Like, we were working on this thing, you know, and there it goes. You know what I mean? Like, I can't believe how bad a day I had. Whatever. You know, like, mm-hmm. you wouldn't believe it. Like, I told them that, you know, we that's a bad idea to kill the Master Chief, and, you know, like, they told me that I'm stupid, you know, and and then they're like, hold up, you know, and then that's when yeah. those like Reddit and 4chan posts come, you know, well, my uncle works at, you know, 343 and he told me, you know, like, that's literally how these things happen. Mm-hmm. But yeah, who do, who do you think's the worst at leaks? I, I'm going to say it's Microsoft. I think Microsoft does like the Microsoft's stuff. known for having basically everything leak out. Um, uh, interestingly enough, some of their purchases lately, though, I mean, nobody Bethesda, the Bethesda acquisition literally did not leak. The Activision one certainly yeah, did not those leak. Ones, yeah, those their games leak really out good. without fail, though. Yeah, their games always X, leak. Yeah, games always leak. But the Series X was also a good example of like not getting leaks too. Yeah. I I'm you think to... uh, you think Jeff Kylie was telling the truth when he said he didn't know that they were gonna like put that on the stage? He seems like a pretty decent guy. I I I believe him. Uh, he, okay. seems, he seems like an everyday kind of guy who just really loves video games, you know? Yeah, no, I he, agree. He I'm catches wondering. a lot of crap. I think he does a really good job. I think I, people just like like to see, like, they, they just want to create yeah, drama. Yeah, I like, he has literally become, like, one of the most prominent video game statesmen. Like, he's put his whole life and career, like, in, into building what is now the Game Awards, you know? Like, I give him all the credit <laughs> in the world. Hopefully he gets to expand it. I know he talked about wanting to like do his own version of E3 and I know he's got like his summer game thing going yeah. on too. Yeah. So hopefully like that becomes like the new centerpiece for E3 and it sucks to see E3 disappear. That's how much this stupid pandemic has ruined everything for us gamers. Yeah. No King reigns forever though. Pain. Pain. What, what's the meme? It, it, it is. Is it a loss? Is, that, is, is this, this loss? Yeah. Is this loss? There you yes. go. <laughs> this is lost. All right, so this one is on the agenda specifically for you. Um, I don't like One Piece. Oh, no. no. <laughs> one Piece Odyssey got announced today, which is a full-fledged open world, I believe, uh, JRPG uh, original story, I believe, written by, I assume, the author of the anime or ma- ma- manga, I mean, I'm sorry. I-, I-, I don't know. I don't know anything about One Piece. So I, I thought you were going to just be able to take this one, like. No. What is no, One Piece even I, about? Uh, it's about uh, wanting to become the Pirate King. That's it? Yeah. That's lame. Yeah. Is this loss? It's a lame. Like, I'm pretty sure it's got... I, I've seen some fight scenes that, that. That fight scenes go pretty hard in One Piece. It's just there's so much. I personally cannot stand the art style. I think the closest I've ever come to enjoying that kind of art style and that design for like its characters, they got the big ass smiles and stuff like that, is probably Fairy Tale. Uh, but Fairy Tale had a much more interesting universe to me, uh, personally. But at the same time, like I'm also not a, like, happy with how Fairy Tale happened. But regardless, I saw a meme where it was just like, "Mom, can we go play Dragon Quest Nine at home, or Dragon Quest Eleven at home?" And then it was like, "No," uh, or "Can we can we play Dragon Quest Eleven?" They're like, "No, we have Dragon Quest Quest Eleven at home," and it's the, the One Piece RPG. And I was like, "Okay." I saw a lot of people excited for this because they're promising that this ga- this game is going to be like full fledged AAA RPG. But I, if you don't like One Piece, I guess it's nothing for you. I mean, yeah. I mean, just based off like the screenshot that I saw, I haven't seen the gameplay if they had any. Right, it literally looked like Dragon Age though. What was that? What was that game that Bandai made that like it had some hype and then it came out and I feel like it went nowhere. It was like anime looking Dark Souls. Oh god. Oh, um you're talking about uh Scarlet Nexus. No, not that one. Um hmm. Oh god, it's driving me I made it. Driving me insane now. Oh, I can't remember. Doesn't matter. It literally was like like Dark Souls or like anime characters basically. Code Vein? Yes. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Anime vampires but Dark Souls. Yes. <laughs> I played uh. a little bit of it. Was I, it okay? No. No. <laughs> I like that answer. No. Not even like... I, 
I cannot stand most JRPGs. Like I can't either. I anymore. get it. Like they're a huge market where they come from, and I think people gas the hell out of them way too much to say like, oh, they like we need JRPG. Like they I feel agree with JRPGs on like Xbox stuff like that. But like, yeah, some of them are just so downright bad. I don't care mm-hmm. what kind of like name is behind it. Like they're just bad. I don't like. I don't like the dialogue. I don't like the style of gameplay. Even like just simple stuff. Just like. Basic control I can't. So I cannot take text-based conversations in video games anymore. I can't. And a lot of JRPGs put them front and center, like you know, yeah. scrolling across your screen. And it's like I, I literally can take maybe 15 minutes of it, and then I'm done. I think Pokemon Legends Arceus was like probably one of like the most frustrating ones because like it is just like endless text, and I'm okay yeah. with text yeah. Pokemon. Like, I love Pokemon. I'm willing to accept it, but Arceus was just like. Breaking the camel's back on that one. I was like, Jesus, yeah. just leave it on. I get it. I'm eating potato mochi for the millionth time. I'm your friend. Let's go. We got things to do. Yeah, accessibility is one thing that I feel like a lot of Japanese, um, especially role playing games, haven't caught up with. And I, that's not universal because I'm sure there's some that, you know, do it well. Um, but they just, yeah, they, they. it's almost like they're so, like, this is how you make an RPG. You know, like, it's like a, color by numbers thing you know and what they do they do very very well but they're never willing to like go outside the line like it's like yeah. nope that's that's it um like it was a big deal when square announced you know a final fantasy game with like what what, what was the final fantasy 7 uh remake or whatever had like half turn based half uh yeah like like like, like, oh oh my god for a game to consider like action combat in 2021 like wow like this is insane that's the bar we have set right that's what i mean um so stuff coming out very very soon hot right now uh weird west is an immersive sim in like the cowboy days kind of you've been guessing that game up for a while now haven't you not Evil West is the one that I was, Evil West. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which v- confuses me very much. The only reason I know that is because I kept searching Weird West and I met Evil West like literally a week ago. Death Stranding <laughs> Director's Cut comes to PC. Moon Knight uh, comes out this week. And I, are you watching that one? Are you a Marvel type guy? Not really. No. 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 But Sonic. Oh boy. Yeah. Are you gonna watch that? I love Sonic, man. The first movie was good. I loved it. So are you going to watch it? Oh, 100%. I, I need maybe. you to re- report back to the podcast. I'm going to need your review. Uh, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be great. It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be so, it's going to be have, it's going to have so much bad that it's good. Like that's what made the first Sonic so good. Also is that it had so many bad moments in it that were also really good. Um, and I hope that they kind of like lean off the really basic cringe Facebook humor. Um, but it doesn't seem like they will, to be honest. And, it is what it is. I'm not gonna complain too much about it, but uh, no, I am super stoked for the next Sonic movie. Did you First see that? Great. That they confirmed that they're doing a Sonic cinematic universe. That's actually the term that they used. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, how else do you need to put it? They made Tales of VTuber. I I haven't seen this in action yet, but you heard that, right? Yeah, maybe I'm VTuber. I actually okay. love watching. I've been watching. I've been watching way more VTubers. You watching what? Gamers. I've been watching way more VTubers than I've actually been watching actual gamers yeah. on Twitch lately. I don't, yeah. I don't really get VTubers, but I don't have to. Like, it's, it's fine. I, it seems Just like an inevitable evolution. Think of it this way. It's like if Doc can create a character that's a real-life persona, why can't we do that? Yet? That's what I mean. It seems like I don't particularly get the appeal of it right now, but I totally look at it and say, like, yeah, this this evolution of live streaming makes sense. Like, it, it makes it, sense. It, it's... Even if it's just its own category, because there's a lot of people that think VTubers are just going to take over. I don't necessarily think that Uh-oh. that's true, but I mm-hmm. do see it being a permanent, established. I don't want to call it a niche, but you know what I mean, like style of content. It'll. I think it. I don't think it has its own category yet, but it will eventually. Right. I think it will. It will definitely like take over because like they even had a they had to take away like hot tub streams to create like a category for it away from just talking yeah um so in this case like i'm pretty sure vtubers are eventually gonna have to move away from just chatting into like a vtubing a vtuber category didn't um 
didn't like well, is it like code miko or nico or something like that when like a streamer of the year award somewhere recently yep. Yep. yeah yeah and, and i've actually heard that uh i think i saw an interview with that person and um they explained like the insane amount of work that goes into doing what what they do and like i have no interest in that content or streamer but like i respected that like when they reading the explanation of like everything that they do to make it work yeah. was pretty impressive yeah uh miko uh she was also a co-host on g4 and i think they recently broke up that segment so she's no longer with them i could be wrong um but like her whole entire like growth as that kind of like techno technological vtuber is significantly is so impressive because right now we're starting for to sure see, yeah we're, we're starting to see like a pla like a like a plateau of just like like a not a downward trend we're starting to see things like pretty much become basic uh understanding of vtubers at this mm -hmm. point. like any it's super accessible now uh you just need to be able to at this point create and adopt a character that is consistent has a brand uh Basically, the, the no normal stuff that you'd expect on Twitch, right? But now it's just more accessible to do it, and I, I appreciate it. I, I really like what's going on with um. I really, I, I really like what's going on with it, and it, uh, what I like most about it is just there's just so much you can do on the screen with them. Like you could create stupid, uh, fun memes that you would normally have to like rely on a little bit more time with waiting and just actual creation when it comes to real life. So like I watched this one. Uh, VTuber, she had a hat that said Fort Nutting in your mom. And it's just like that hat can exist in real life, but it's just like the the it was animosity. Super easy, yeah. It, the animosity and like the dumb low effort creativity of putting that on this like really detailed virtual character. Just hilarious. I, you can I make your own shirts without ordering the shirt. Yeah, it's great. And you could draw, draw more attention to it. But we got I got way off track with VTubers, my bad. That's okay. <laughs> um all right, this week's Don't Miss It, games that we are, we think you should play one way or another. I've got the existing game this week. You've got the upcoming. You want to go first? You, you go want me first. to go? Me? You go first. Yeah. All right. So my existing game that you should play, this is going to be a curveball for a lot of people who know me and my tastes. Uh, Iron Brigade. This was published by Double Fine, I think, during the Xbox 360 era. Uh, it is a old school tower defense game in which you uh, control a and, and customize and upgrade a mech. And I'm, while I'm not a huge tower defense uh, type person, I really like Double Find has a way of adding flair to their games, which can make basically any genre uh, seem fun. Stacking is another great example of that, where they made me a person who basically hates puzzle games play and enjoy a puzzle game. Um but yeah, Iron Brigade it had really uh, it had cool multiplayer at the time too. Finding a community for it these days would probably be close to impossible. But um, the single player campaign was just a lot of fun. It's just it's got mechs, it's tower defense, it's got double fine humor and style all over it. I think the main enemy were uh, I think they were like uh, evil mechanical bears from outer space, but they spoke Russian if I remember correctly. And that's mm -hmm. like that's like double fine. Like that's you know. Okay. That's it's just fun. It, it's it, it's just a lot of fun. And you could probably get it for, you know, less than 10 bucks. So if you're looking for a mech game, a tower defense game, go with Iron Brigade. I really like it. Speaking of tower defense games, I love balloons. Tower defense. Balloons tower defense. Was like oh, I've heard jam. it's really good. I've never played it, but I've heard it's good. I love balloons tower defense. OK, so mine, I had to like look up the name for it because I don't want to say it properly, but it's Minico's Night Kit. Um, say again? I'll read this. Maniko's Meneko's Night Market. Maniko Maneko. I'm pretty sure it's Maneko. Um, because Neko is cat. Um, it is a. It's like a little. It, it's like a hybrid of Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing. And I'll read the description for you here. It's actually really hard for me to like. I'm looking it up words. over here. Yeah. Um, it's basically a kind of game like Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley, where you explore, craft, and breed cats. So it's you literally just create an island full of cats. And um, I, I saw this as like a TikTok recommendation. And I was like, okay, let me look into that. And like, I'm absorbed into it. I showed it to like my my, my ex. Like, I'm not going to give things weird on found account. Yes, but I showed it to her and she's like, I need that game. So just some, it had really cool music with it too. I really like the music that came with it. There was um at one point, um, the guy who created Super Meat Boy was making a game. 
it probably wouldn't have looked like this called mugenics which was about breeding cats but knowing him um super meat boy and uh binding of isaac it was going to have a very bizarre flair to it and probably disturbing um but he never finished it he started it and, and canceled it like literally like three or four times but this kind of looks like looks like somebody like heard that concept and was like that sounds really cool let's do it as like a not twisted and bizarre concept <laughs> like let's do it in a more approachable uh way so published by humble games too which i really like i like humble as a company All right. um, so that's it this week guys um probably next Why week we'll, we? we'll be talking about the second episode of halo and uh playstation's debut uh probably game pass their version of game pass playstation pass ps pass p-i-s-s at least, at least we're on that. track of something that we could talk about like tv shows we watch because you and i are not aligned yeah <laughs> halo we can <laughs> we can do that we can manage that we though. Can do halo. one episode oh, a week man um we got like how many weeks like how how long is this do you know how many episodes are in this no that's just gonna say i don't even know i'm assuming like 10 but i don't even really know i've been watching the boys on amazon prime which i'm really liking so far i don't know if you watch that at all but i haven't watched i haven't been just watching boys and like you know what brother tell you what man i know a handsome man when i see one and i well it's more like uh, that that the boys man with the beard the guy from doom dude i want him to be the next wolverine so badly uh carl urban I want him right, to be. It is I Carl, right? Carl, like, Carl Urban. Carl, Carl Urban. Yeah, I want him to be the next Wolverine because we know Hugh Jackman's not going to come back. I still think he'll him. appear in the multiverse somewhere, like at least once. Hugh Jackman, Maybe. Will. even with if it's the, for like two minutes. Back. He'll appear in Spider-Man. Finally, on my way back home in the year like 2040, <laughs> and Hugh Jackman's like 60 years old, and he gets to be old man. Still Logan. ripped as hell. Yeah. Hey, Logan's amazing though. Oh yeah. Logan's, Logan's an amazing movie. movie. I should rewatch that. 100%. I've been wanting to watch it in the black and white rendition. Oh, I forgot they did that. Yeah. My favorite Twitter comment I saw with that was just like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Why don't you just like turn your like picture screen to like black and white and you do the same thing. It's, it's like, true. It's not the same. Yeah, it's just, it's true. <laughs> I mean. Do that to all of your shows. If, yeah, if you, think you could. Easy. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> or, or just go colorblind. I mean, what's the big deal? <laughs> Colors are overrated. All right, guys. We will uh, we will see you next week. Mayor Later, Reynolds everybody. and Jedi heading out beyond Nemesis. See you next week, 7 p.m. Central on Monday. See ya. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. <laughs> Very Texan.